All right, class, we are going to write notes today on recursive and explicit, recursive and explicit formulas. And then we're going to do some guided practice problems on geometric sequences, okay? All right, so this is Q4. This is going to be page, page two. And today's date is the 29th. So that's 3 29 21. Excuse me. And again, the title of this page is Recursive um, and Explicit Formulas. Okay. Recursive and Explicit Formulas. Okay, good people, we are going to talk about the difference between recursive and explicit. The only two functions that we have done this year is linear and um, exponential. We have another one that we're doing, um, which is quadratic, but with quadratic um, formulas, you're not going to find recursive formulas for quadratic formulas. You're only going to find recursive for either linear or exponential. So we're going to compare linear and exponential together. So on this side, we're going to put linear functions. And on this side, we're going to put exponential functions. These are the two functions that we've covered so far. Okay. Just to recap what each of them are before we talk about the recursive and explicit formulas for them. Your linear functions are equations or functions that graph straight lines. So we got our, let's do definition. So here are equations that graph straight lines. Equations that graph straight lines. Whereas for the definition for your exponential functions are going to be the equations that graph curved lines, equations that graph curved lines. Oops. Okay. For here, you have um, constant rates of change. So your rate of change is constant. This is constant rates of change. And for exponential functions, Exponential functions increase or decrease by a percent or common ratio. Um, they increase or decrease by a percent or common ratio. And those are your definitions there for each. And I'll pause to give you a chance to write. All right, remember what they look like. For this one, what they look like, remember they're like four different kinds. of slopes, you have straight lines that go up, straight lines that go down, straight lines that are flat, and straight lines that are horizontal, um, vertical, sorry. Okay, so you got different kinds of lines, positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, undefined slope. This is what they look like. This is what linear functions look like. 
Exponential functions look like this, two kinds. You got exponential growth and you got exponential decay, right? Oops, sorry, y'all. Exponential uh, growth is when your curved line is going up. It's increasing at a rapid rate. Exponential decay is when your curved line is going down. It's decreasing at a rapid rate. This is what they look like. Questions about that? And I'll pause for the calls, okay? And I can write these in actually. This is positive slope. This is negative slope. This is zero slope. This is undefined slope. Over here, this line curve going up is exponential um, growth. And this is exponential decay. That's what they look like. All right. Now we got the type of sequence that these are. Type of sequence. Okay. Um, linear equations are arithmetic sequences, okay? So a linear function is an arithmetic sequence. Are arithmetic Linear functions are arithmetic sequences. Exponential functions are geometric sequences. Okay. Exponential functions are geometric sequences. By definition, an arithmetic sequence is where you add or subtract to get to the next number. So in here, let's put arithmetic, and it looks like it's two words. It, I didn't mean for that to happen. Arithmetic sequences where you add or subtract to get to the next number. Add or subtract to get next number, okay? And uh, geometric sequence is where you multiply to get to the next number. And remember, even when it looks like it's dividing, you still write it in terms of multiplication. So if it's dividing by two, that's the same as multiplying by a half. So we always write geometric sequences in terms of multiplication. So that's why the definition is going to be, instead of saying both multiplication and division, we only write geometric sequences in terms of multiplication. So if we divide by two, really what we're doing is multiplying by a half, okay? So geometric, Sequences by definition is where you're going to multiply to get the next number, okay? Instead of adding and subtracting, you're multiplying. So here is addition and subtraction, and here is multiplication. All right, so let's do recursive. We're going to talk about recursive first. Now, recursive formulas are formulas that you have to know the previous number to get the next number. Okay, so recursive. So when we do recursive, oops.
Okay, recursive formulas, and I'll put it for both of these. Recursive formulas are formulas where you use the previous number to get the next number. Okay. And I'll pause to give you a chance to write, and then I'll do examples for linear, and then I'll do an example for um, exponential. So I'll put linear here again so you'll know, and I'll put exponential here so you'll know. Okay. A type of recursive formula, I'm going to put the name of the type over here, and then I'll write it for both. So one type of recursive formula is going to be your next now. It's called next now equation. This is the name of a recursive. I'm going to put it in quotations. It's called your next now equation. Your next now equation. So to write a recursive formula, Using the next now equation, the first thing you do for linear is and really for both is you're going to do the starting amount first. So this is how that works. You're starting at. So let's do let me do an example here because that will make more sense. So let's suppose I have y is equal to 7x plus 1. So to write the recursive formula for that. I'm going to say starting at, and I'm, my starting amount is 1. So I'm saying starting at 1. And what am I doing every single time to get to the next number in the list is I'm going to add, because that's a positive 7. So I'm going to add 7 every single time, because my slope is 7. So it's going to be next equals now plus seven. This is my recursive formula for this equation. You always have to write starting at, and you're always going to do next equals now. If it's a negative slope, you're going to say minus. If it's a positive slope, you're going to say plus. So your y-intercept goes here and your slope goes here. And that's for linear functions. And we'll do some examples of that here in a second. Any questions about your recursive formula for a linear function? Please raise your hand if you're still writing. Okay. So let's do recursive formula for exponential functions. Okay. For exponential functions. Let's do this exponential function. Let's suppose you're starting with the number 2 and you're going up by 4 raised to the x power. Okay? So you're going to follow the same format here. You're going to do starting at, so I got starting at, and my y-intercept here is 2. My starting number is 2. So I say starting at 2. Then I still use the words next equals now. So it's going to be next is equal to now. And remember, with exponential functions, you multiply. So instead of adding or subtracting, you're multiplying. And what number are you going to multiply every single time? Four. four. So it's going to be times four. Great job. So this is how you write your recursive formula for this exponential function okay and i'll pause to give you a chance to write okay so there are many recursive formulas that can be used and remember to know the difference between what's a recursive and explicit is that a recursive formula is where you have to use the previous number to get the next number
So in these, why this is a recursive is because first of all, I had to say start at one. And to get my next number, I have to plug in whatever the now is. So the one is now and then add seven. And then I got to keep going. I got to keep, if I want to know the fifth number, I got to do this same formula five times to get to the fifth number. That's how I know that this is recursive because I have to keep doing it over and over and over and over again to get to my desired term. If I want it, if I want the eighth term, then I got to do this eight times. If I want the tenth term, I got to do this ten times. Any questions about a recursive formula? Why it's called recursive? Okay, so let's do. An example, and then I'll do explicit. Explicit is going to be easy because you've already done explicit. All right, so let's do an example for recursive. Okay, so let's do this one. Y is equal to negative 3x plus um, 8. Okay, what kind of function is this, first of all? Is it linear or exponential? It's linear because it's written in y equals mx plus b, and there's not a term raised to the x power. It's also addition. And it's also addition. Okay, well, this one right here is subtraction because slope is a minus. Okay, does that make sense? This is my slope and this is my starting amount. Okay, so this is linear. Super important that we understand that. Okay, so now we're going to write the recursive form for this. Okay, so now we're going to write the recursive form for this linear function. So first thing that we do is write starting at what number are we starting with in this sequence eight. we're starting with eight eight is our starting amount okay and we automatically since we're using next now we're automatically going to say our next number is going is equal to whatever the now is and what am i doing every single time to get to the next number um, minus three i subtract three to get to the next number so this is going to be my recursive formula. Any questions about that? How do y'all feel about that? Is that okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. At home, how are y'all feeling? Give me thumbs up, thumbs down or something. Okay. All right. Let's look at the one that's like this, okay? Y is equal to seven times one half to the X power, okay? What kind of function is this? Is it linear or is it exponential? exponential. This one's exponential because X is raised, because this uh, one half is raised to the X power. If somebody had a question at home, go ahead, baby. No question? Okay, I'm gonna keep going, all right? Let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is exponential. So I'm gonna write exponential here. All right, so now I'm gonna write the recursive form for this exponential function. And the one that I'm gonna use is next now, okay? So when you use next now, you write the word starting at. What's my starting number here? Seven. It's seven, good job. Okay, I'm starting at, and since I'm using next now equation, I'm going to write, I automatically write my next number is equal to my now, and what am I doing to get the very next number? Times one half. Times one half. Okay, so I'm going to use the dot for times here, one half. And this is my exponential function written in recursive formula. Any questions about that? Okay. So now let's talk about let's talk about explicit, okay? So now we're going to talk about explicit formulas. Explicit formulas 
are formulas where you can find whatever term you're looking for by just substituting the term that you're looking for, okay? So explicit formulas are formulas where you can substitute, oops, the, let's say the desired term you are looking for into the formula to get the answer. And it's super simple. Okay, with recursive, you gotta keep doing it over and over and over again to get to the desired term that you're looking for. If you're looking for the eighth term, then you gotta do that recursive formula eight different times. But with explicit, all you gotta do is substitute eight into the formula to get the eighth term. Any questions about that? Those, that's the difference. So now let's do an example for linear and exponential. Let's do an example for linear and then exponential, okay? So for linear, very simple, for linear, you can use the slope intercept form to find whatever you're looking for. Like if I'm looking for um, the seventh number in the list, I can just plug in seven and for X and figure out what the value is. So for linear, you can use an explicit form would be the slope intercept form, which we've already used many times. Y equals MX plus B, okay? You can use that. This is an explicit formula. The slope intercept form is an explicit formula. All you have to do, if you want to know what y is uh, when, at, when x is equal to 10, all you got to do is just plug in 10 for x to find y. Okay, you don't have to do it 10 times to get there. So this is an explicit formula. Any questions on why this is explicit? Okay. The other one for a linear function is the arithmetic sequence formula. And we did that in the first unit. Uh, we did it a long time ago, and I'll go back. It's page 14 in um, the first quarter, but this is the formula. It's a n is equal to a sub 1 plus parentheses a minus 1 to the d power, okay? This is another explicit formula that you can use for linear functions the arithmetic sequence. Since arithmetic sequences are linear functions, you can use the arithmetic sequence formula. Any questions about what I said? Okay, so I'll recap just in case you forgot. This N right here is the term that you're looking for. Okay, the a sub one is the first number in the list, not the zero number, but the first number. It's the first number in the list. Again, n is the term that you're looking for. n means the same thing here and here. And d is your common difference. This is like your slope. If you're going up by positive two, 
then D is going to be positive 2. If you're going down by 3, then D is going to be negative 3. So this is your common difference or your slope. What is it going up or down by? And if you don't remember that, revisit this page right here, page 14 in your interactive notebook, finding the if term of an arithmetic sequence. This is this is where we we did this. This is for linear functions, okay? It says find the tenth number in the list. You substituted 10 in to the formula, and you were able to get the value for the tenth number that's in the list. Okay, since you're able to substitute 10 into the formula to get a value for the 10th number that's in the list, that's why this is an explicit formula. Because you don't have to do it 10 times to get your answer. Any questions about that? Raise your hand if you're still copying. Okay, for exponential functions. You have a lot of explicit formulas for exponential function. You have the standard form. Oops. You have the standard form for exponential functions. Y is equal to A times B to the X power. This is a um, explicit formula. All you're doing is just substituting a value in for x to get y. You have uh, exponential growth. The exponential growth formula is an exponential, is I'm sorry, is an explicit formula. Y is equal to c, parentheses 1, plus r to the t power. You plug in t or x. I've been putting x. It could be x or t. You plug in x to get y. This is an explicit formula. And exponential decay. Y is equal to c, parentheses 1 minus r to the x power. The last explicit formula for exponential functions, the one that we're going to do today, is the, geo, is the formula for geometric sequence. So it's the geometric sequence formula. And this one you hadn't seen before. The geometric sequence formula is a sub n is equal to, we got a, okay, a is the first number that's in, it's just uh, first number that's in the list, so it's a, I uh, should make this not, it's not really, it's a big size lowercase a is what it is, times r, to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so n again, just like over here, is the number that you're looking for. A is the first number, not the zero number, the first number that's in the list. And then you got n minus 1. It's to the n minus 1 power. So for this one, if you're trying to find, well, I forgot to say what R was. R is our common ratio. It's the number that's being multiplied to get to the next number in the list. It's our common ratio. All right, any questions about the difference between what explicit formulas are, where you can substitute the term that you're looking for to get an answer versus recursive formula where if you want the 10th number in the list, you've got to repeat those steps 10 times.
to get the 10th number in the list. Any questions about that? Okay, pause for the calls. This is the part that I want you to do on your own and then I am going, um, and then we'll go over them um, tomorrow because we're completely out of time. Okay, this, this is the part I want you to do. You see where it says determine uh, if the sequence is geometric? So you're gonna look at these patterns right here to see if it's a geometric sequence. If it's a geometric sequence, then find the number that's being multiplied. What is the common ratio? How are they getting to the next number? What are they multiplying to get to the next number? Questions, comments, or concerns about that? And I just want you to do one through six. Yes, just one through six. Okay? Anyone lost? This is the part that you're doing on your own today, and then we'll come back and talk about those. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Please watch this video if you if you need to rewatch the video again. Um, is there any any questions before I stop the video? Okay.